I want to uh, talk more about the swatting. Art Roderick joins us now. This um, And Joe's right, it's become a pattern. We hear Judge Angeron out in his home in Long Island, but so many other, uh, as I said, the other judge in the different, uh, or the other, in the different Trump case, and there have been other cases around the country. I don't think I'd ever heard this term at all until recent weeks, and now you hear it about, you know, once or twice or maybe three times a week. Swatting is a specific crime, though, right, Art? Yeah, exactly. Swatting is it has been around probably since 2015, 2016. And I think in the 2018 and 2019, it started picking up that there were a lot more of these incidences. So basically what occurs is an individual calls 911 and basically states there's a violent crime, in this particular case, a bomb threat going on at a different residence. So SWAT teams usually respond to these types of incidents, and that's what the caller tries to do. So it is a crime. I mean, there is a federal crime uh, reference to swatting, uh, and there are several states that have instituted some state crimes against it. But these these uh, uh, sentences can vary from anywhere to, from five to 20 years to life if there's an actual death that occurs during during the reporting of this mm -hmm. false crime. Why do we, you know, why do you think we're seeing so much of it lately? Is it just a copycat situation where, you know, that it's, you know, it's in the news and people hear about it and there's more and more? Or? Yeah, I, I think a lot of it is probably copycat, but it's also somebody has a grudge against somebody else. Yeah. Um, and, and the only way to really stop this is to start prosecuting to the, to the extreme levels uh, in the judicial process that, that that they can get, and this this should slow a lot of this down. But you know, the FBI actually established a national swatting incident database in May of 2023, and uh, usually since since the FBI has been kind of monitoring this, mm -hmm. they've established this database to get a to get to get a view of what's going on nationally with this particular crime, and uh, they average around a thousand. Uh, swatting incidences a year currently. That was reported in 2019, but there seems to be a huge increase. And we've seen a lot of these incidences lately against state judges in this particular case, but we also have the federal judge in Florida that was recently uh, hit with this particular crime. Isn't that why some you see the gag orders uh, more and more? I mean, in, in the Trump case, which we're talking about now, I mean, it, we've seen a number of his cases where there is a gag order put in place, say, hey, don't talk about this because he might be out publicly, you know, uh, saying things about the judge or the clerk or whoever it may be. I mean, does that help or, or I mean, you know, help prevent this? Uh, a lot of the gag orders do. Um, I think in, 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 when you look at the history of the U.S. Marshals, my former agency, they are responsible for the security and protection of the federal judicial process. That includes somewhere in the area of 800 physical courtrooms, uh, 2,700 federal judges, 30,000 uh, people that work in the court system to include U.S. attorneys. Uh, the Marshal Service averages around 1,300 to 1,500 of these uh, uh, investigations every year into threats against your judiciary. It is becoming a bigger thing, and I think the gag mm -hmm. orders do help in, in a lot of these cases. Uh, but, you know, you have a lot of individuals out there right. that, that have a grudge and hold a grudge. And, and sometimes it's nothing to do you with uh, a case. You know, we had the bomb threat out in Brooklyn. Uh, did you see that at the high school, uh, which was related yes. to this, the Brooklyn High School after the, the migrant story, which we talked a lot about. So it's not, it's you know, the gag order wouldn't necessarily prevent something like that. But right. I guess that goes to your copycat point. But that's, I mean, that's obviously dangerous exactly. as well, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's becoming the crime du jour uh, recently here, and, and unfortunately, I mean, luckily we have these SWAT teams that are trained very well, so when they do respond, they can initially figure out exactly what's going on. But there have been some deaths reported. 2021, we had an individual die of a heart attack uh, because of a swatting incident, and uh, there's been several other reports of, of uh, deaths, but they are rare, but it can occur. All right. We, we've been seeing it so much. We wanted to talk a little bit more about it, and we thank you, Art, for coming on. You're just saying heavier prosecution, you know, to, to set uh, an exactly. example seems to be the answer. So we'll look and we'll continue to follow this. Art Roderick with us today. We always appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.